Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Sorgatron.com is a website for this and uh, this podcast and uh, vlog, whatever you want to call it. And uh, today uh, we're going to be talking about uh, OnLive. Hey, remember them? They're kind of still around. Um, <laughs> now, this is a service. That, okay, there was some news today about Sony buying it and, and ultimately shutting it down, it seems. And. Uh, this is a service that I championed when it came out and ever since in the in the competitors since then. So a little bit of background here. Um, what uh, it, it, it's basically what is on life? It's an online streaming service where your games are installed on your computer. Um, and uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting chats and saying that I look more bathed than other people on a Friday morning in my uh, meerkat right now. So it's throwing me a touch off, but recovery mode here. Um, but no, basically, uh, it's basically cloud computing. It started in, I think it said 2010. Uh, that sounds about right. And it, uh, you know, again, you could buy the games. You could have done a subscription service. I worked on your PC. There was even an application I could have streamed the games and watched other people playing on uh, my, my iPad, my Generation 1 iPad, for instance. They had a side business, business where you could actually remote desktop into something on their cloud that had full Office capabilities, had full uh, Internet Explorer, Flash, all that kind of stuff. Again, another option for uh, another option for your iPad to become way more functional as a computer by doing this all in the cloud and really having office access way before we had office access like we do today, which really just happened within the last year. But of course, the gaming was the most exciting part, and the idea that you know they 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 figured it out to keep the latency that when you push that button, it goes out to a server, who knows where, and comes back with a reaction on your screen in such a low enough time that you had. You know that you you know that that that, that you didn't even notice, right? Uh, and of course, there were other pretenders to this. Uh, Gaikai was another one, which of course got bought by Sony as well, and that's actually been baked in currently uh, as part of Sony's PlayStation Four. I do believe again, I don't, I'm not uh, as versed in Sony's side of things. I don't have, I haven't had a PlayStation since the two and, and everything, but I believe it's part of their PlayStation Plus service. Somebody's going to correct me on that, uh, where you can play a lot of the old PlayStation games, PlayStation Three games that you actually buy online and, and you play through that. Uh, the unfortunate part of this is that OnLive is actually going to be shut down on, at the end of the end of April, April 30th, um, which that sucks if you're invested in this. If you're on board with this thing, and this is why I take a careful pause when I get into a service like this. That's why it took me a long time to get into Steam, uh, because when you get into a service like this and you actually purchase a game, purchase, you know, it's one thing to have a subscription and you're playing the games on there and you have a stock of games, which I love that because it's kind of like that Netflix version of. That Netflix version of video games, which I really love that idea, and I'd love to see more of that. And I think that's what part of Sony's service may actually do for a monthly fee. And there's other versions of this that have been coming out as well. But uh, but I thought it was you know, certainly one of the bigger the bigger of these uh, uh, services. There was the first one for one thing. I, I saw a few talks on the topic, uh, you know, from from the uh, owner, and and they 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 fell on hard times. This isn't the the first thing. It, it was it was around for nearly five years here, according to The Verge. And uh, they ultimately had to uh, lay off employees in 2012, but they still kept going. Uh, me, I, I, I'm not too mad about it. I think I might have paid like $3 to get uh, Deus Ex, which I actually never just sat down and played, which is an ongoing problem, as I've discussed here on the on the show. Um, and, and so it's like, well, I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to lose out on that. But people were buying games at full price on here. Like you can get like Arkham Asylum and it was probably about 50 bucks. Uh, streaming, but you don't possess anything, and that's the problem. And this is where we go with a lot of these online services. Uh, you know, we've seen, you know, this is kind of another issue, but we've seen, you know, for instance, people that bought The Lion King on Amazon streaming, and I bought a few things on Amazon streaming, mostly TV shows, um, and it's also my digital copies of a lot of DVDs, especially the Marvel ones, are over there. And if Marvel goes away, changes their policy, something that goes away, and and that is, that is an issue, and that's why I think it is a little safer to stick with bigger companies like Amazon, iTunes, uh, Google Play, for instance. I don't, I feel a little safer about that. Less so if I was a Target ticket member right now, because that's also shutting down. Um, and I think everybody needs to tread lightly on it. And unfortunately, that's going to be the detriment of these kinds of services that are trying to get a foothold in here. It was a great idea. 
um, they actually had a dedicated console you could buy. Now, if you bought that console, uh, they are offering refunds to those who purchased the hardware uh, on or after February 1st of this year. Okay, so they feel like if you got in January, you're getting your money's worth, I guess, all right? Um, but uh, it, it, that that really that really stinks. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any other uh, details on this, but then, but generally, you know, it, it, it sucks. But you know, this was one of those companies, and this is what happens with a lot of things. Unf the unfortunate thing with a, a lot of these companies is the the them being successful is them being bought and rolled into somebody else, like a Sony. I am a little sad that this service got purchased by Sony, of all people, who already has Gaikai. They already have the technology. So I'm wondering what they're getting out of this. I think probably a little bit extra technology, probably patents, to be honest. Because there's probably a lot of crossover between this and Gaikai, because I think they're relatively the same kind of technology. But of course, online probably has their own version uh, of that, it could be more efficient, could enhance what you're going to get on Sony. I wish Microsoft would have picked this up. I wish Nintendo, of all people, would have picked this up. Microsoft probably doesn't need this, actually, because as it is, they got their Azure uh, service. Uh, some of the games, like, I want to say Titanfall. Am I right? Titanfall? Uh, because the, one of the big selling points, and I don't know how much is being utilized right now on the Xbox One, was that they were going to have part of your game doesn't actually render there on your console sitting in your living room. Part of the game actually renders in the cloud on their Azure servers. Again, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I believe this is how it works out. Um, and uh, so, so you're able to grow beyond that hardware sitting there, which will be very helpful in about five years when they're, they're like finally finding a ceiling. Although I feel like we didn't even get to a ceiling on Xbox 360. Um, and here's the, uh, you know, the Nero's in my Meerkat right now. And if you don't know, I uh, I, I do this between 8 and 9 usually in the morning. And look out for, on my Twitter at Sorgatron for uh, Meerkat or Periscope postings. I try to have a little bit of a live chat room while we're doing this. Uh, besides, I feel the same way. I don't like to buy, quote unquote, digital media. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, smaller, cheaper, smaller, cheaper companies, uh, more risk, larger, more stable will always be more expensive. There you go. There's, there's another one from Nero out there. Um, anyways, you know, and, and uh, you know, I wish Nintendo would have bought it because Nintendo doesn't have server technology. Nintendo isn't a server company. As it is for their mobile platform, they're partnering with DNA, D-E-N-A, for clarification if you want to Google that later, uh, who's a, a mobile, I think they specialize in freemium games, but supposedly they're not going to be freemium in this version of what they're going to be doing. Um, but uh, so still, it's kind of interesting to see this, and, and, and uh, it's just going to stack on top of that. I wish there was another company. I don't think anybody else is out here doing this. Now, we are getting other things like a little bit of streaming. Um, we are actually getting with the Steam OS. You can do actually like like I can load up on the computer down here uh, uh, Steam and all my games and play it via a little box or a smaller computer like Linux or something that's not compatible up on my TV upstairs, and, and that happens over the network. But again, kind of a smaller localized version. It's just going over my network down to this computer processing and handing off those visuals and the inputs back up to uh, to my other computer or, or a box that I might be playing it with. Um, same with Sony PlayStation 4. You can get the PlayStation TV, play your Sony PlayStation 4 games. I don't know why I'm saying the entire name. And uh, in another room that you have this TV set up, you have your PlayStation 4 in the living room so you can watch Blu-rays and everything. <laughs> Who buys discs? Uh, and then, actually, I just bought a DVD, that WWE Flintstones one. So there really wasn't another option, though. And really, Blu-ray for the Flintstones, I don't think that's necessary. Um, but anyways, where was I? Um, but, but, you know, that idea, again, kind of that localized streaming idea. I'm actually really – and plus they're doing uh, broadcast as well. That's a whole other – concept of course that's that's more of a twitch kind of situation and playstation doing that with their twitch integration which riz riz you better be doing some more videos with that i want to see them i want to see those videos you have a button to do let's play videos we've talked about doing let's play forever let's freaking do that i'm calling people out in the podcast that's what's doing that's what that's what this has come to this is what i, I i'm excited it's friday uh, i got a lot of stuff to do and uh and uh <laughs> And I'm sad to see online go to be the be zero. It was always really cool too. If you get a chance, in the last, in the next under 30 days, go to OnLive, get the app on your iDevice. There might be an Android one as well. Drop in there and check out how they pull up the screen of everybody right now playing video games. 
You can just drop in any of those. I think this is kind of precursor to what we have now with Twitch and everything. So let me know what you think. Um, geez, question for this one. There's so many directions we could go. Uh, we could roll back to, again, the question that Nero is an answering in the chat room. Um, what is your policy on buying digital media? Are you just all in and that's what you get anymore? Or what is your uh, level of caution when you're looking at such a thing? Let me know at Sorgatron on the Twitter, YouTube in the comments section, um, or in on Sorgatron.com in the blog comments. And uh, let me know what you think. Digital media, what's your uh, level of caution? We'll see you guys next time. Have a good holiday. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.